how wonderful that he desires fellowship with his people. And this is the means that it happened. Before Emmanuel, before the Christ came, this is the way it happened. So Zacharias' job is to go into the temple of God, which is very holy and scary, and burn incense before him. It was his turn. I think I have bad ears, Pastor. I think that's why it's ever squeezed around the ear. Terry's helping me out there. Is that better? We'll see. All right. Bear with me, folks. Okay. Um, So he went into the temple of the Lord while the crowd of people outside prayed during the hour when the incense was burned and thanked the Lord for praying people. Sure, the, the priest, the pastor can intervene, but the people need to be behind praying and seeking God. And that's what we need in this church and all of our churches, to stand behind those in leadership, those going before the Lord. Verse 11, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. Uh, You know, this wasn't just a ritual, folks. Um, God says, I will meet you in that temple. And he meant it, and he did. Now, at a time in Israel's history, it got to a point where it was, it was meaningless. God said, you, you do the rituals, but your heart's not there. But God showed up. He presented himself. And uh, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing at the right side of the altar where the incense was burned. Verse 12, when Zechariah saw him, he was alarmed and felt afraid. Uh, so would I. Verse 13, but the angel of the Lord said to him, do not be afraid. Same thing, the Lord is always telling us. He told Mary, don't be afraid. Told the disciples, fear not. Always encouraging us, don't be afraid. And we're still fearful. And He knows that. And I don't think it's a scolding. I think He's just always trying to encourage us, don't be afraid. These are fearful times, folks. They really are. Um, beside COVID, there are just a lot of very creepy things going on in government, not just in the United States, but worldwide. It's a scary time. The Lord would tell us, don't be afraid. Trust in me. I'm there with you. I'm behind you. I've got you in this. Don't be afraid. When Zacharias saw him, he was alarmed and fell afraid, but the angel said, don't be afraid, Zachariah. God has heard your prayer and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son. You are to name him John. How glad and happy you will be, and how happy many others will be when he is born. John will be great in the Lord's sight. He must not drink any wine or strong drink from his very birth, and he will or from his very birth he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. So not only is he going to have a son but he is going to have a son that is very special, one that will serve, the God, serve God and be very great in his kingdom. And it's, it, it, as far as um, it says that from his very birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, and even as we were a little bit further with Elizabeth, we see that even in the womb, there's a touching and a filling with the Holy Spirit. Um, anybody wants to have a, um, a pro-choice argument and follow Scripture, this would be a big stumbling block for them. The Lord knows us, even in the womb. That's when it starts. And the Spirit of God would fill him even at that time. Verse 16, And he will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go ahead of the Lord, strong and mighty, like the prophet Elijah. Elijah was nobody to fool with. (laughs) I mean, what a daunting task to stand before all those prophets of Baal and call upon the Lord and say, Lord, you need to show up and you need to win this showdown. I'm going to wet this altar down and I'm going to trust that you are going to come and you are going to set this thing ablaze and you are going to demonstrate your power to all the people, all those prophets, so the people can have a clear choice who they're going to serve. What a guy! John the Baptist is coming in that same spirit and he's going to present to the people this this one that has been prophesied from days of old. He is coming. And it's different from what you're used to. There's going to be a sacrifice. There's going to be an atonement made, but not from a bull or a lamb or a dove. It's going to be the Son of God. And there had to be preparation in the hearts of the people to be ready for Him. 
Even so, we need to be prepared for that. And I wonder how often the Lord does that for us. We think of the time when we're saved. And there's so much, um, so much growth after that as we serve the Lord. So much that we learn um, in serving Him and serving Him better. But I wonder how the Lord prepared each of us even to receive Him. That time of our salvation. What was the Lord working behind the scenes and softening and, 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 and helping us to understand and bringing us to the place that we would even receive that precious gift? John the Baptist had a job and he needed to soften the hearts to prepare the way of the Lord through preaching and helping people to understand. And what a job he did. Um, he will bring fathers and children together Again, oh, amen for that. Amen for that. He will turn disobedient people back to the way of thinking of righteousness. He will get the Lord's people ready for Him. A people prepared. People prepared for the Savior. They weren't ready. They needed to be prepared. Many had no idea, but there needs to be a preparation so that we know who He is. Now, we know what happens with Zechariah, that he loses his ability to speak um, for, for a period of time. But I want to, I want to skip down to where uh, uh, Mary goes to visit Elizabeth. We know the angel Gabriel comes to, comes to Mary. And it's, I want to pick up in verse 39 of chapter 1. Uh, soon after Mary, um, in fact, the, the, even the... Uh, I, I think the other versions say immediately after or quickly after. In other words, you get the idea that there's an urgency in Mary to go to her cousin Elizabeth. Uh, their family, for one thing. Both people that loved and served God, another thing. And she desired that communion with her. She wanted to come and share and explain Folks, there are people in your family that you can't tell these kind of things to. You're not, you know, there, there are people, um, you know, Brandon may have something pressing on his heart where the Lord's revealed something to him. It's not anyone he can go and talk to about that. But when you have that person in Christ that shares that conviction, that knows that love, that is familiar with him, and not only a Christian, but with that same, same uh, level of intensity, you can share and talk with that person. There, there's a fellowship there that is very precious, and she had that with Elizabeth. Not just anybody. But she has to go quick. She's got to get over there and tell her what's happened. So soon after, Mary got ready and hurried off to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby moved within her. Hallelujah. Uh, the other versions say that the baby leaped. Again, not born yet, still very much a person. And that spirit was there. <coughs> Excuse me. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's wild. Uh, sometimes, you know, in, in, in today's church circles, you know, we got the holy roller thing. And well, if you're going to get served, or if you're going to get filled with the Spirit, you got to go to the tent meeting and hear uh, brother so-and-so or evangelist so-and-so from somewhere because there's some kind of movement uh, that's, that's coming through. And that's kind of how there's got to be, there's got to be a lot of jumping and singing and keys to my Honda and, and all kinds of excitement like that. Uh, <clears throat> did you ever hear that? Say, I've actually heard this. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The, the preachers, in trying to stir the people up, they'd come over and they'd put the Holy Ghost hand on them, you know, and, and then you've got to get the shove. You know, Hallelujah! It's got to be the shove because they're going to fall backwards. If you don't fall backwards on the floor, then you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. And then they would say like something like, say, keys to my Honda, keys to my Honda, keys to my Honda. And then eventually they would start speaking in tongues. So it... It, the reason I'm pointing that out is because, again, I, a lot of the church has just gotten a lot of weird with some things. And, and if you have an experience like that, I'm sorry. I'm not saying that it's totally fake, but I, I don't. I think that man tries to usher in a movement of the Holy Spirit so much, 
but I think it's the Holy Spirit's decision on when He's going to come, who He's going to fill, and when. Um, and here, gee, <laughs> Mary just walks in. I mean, think about it. Folks, this is wild. If people think you're weird, this, this is the kind of stuff... I, okay, Irv, so you're telling me that the Jesus you believed in was inside of a woman who never had relations with the man. She goes to see her cousin who has another, uh, who has a baby, who jumps inside of her and then the mother gets filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what you believe? And they're just like, yeah. And they're like, well, you're weird. And he's like, well, I am weird, but I still believe that. But that's, that's why there's such a, a, such a vast difference between you and some of your friends that don't know Christ because it's, 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 a, crazy, it's a crazy truth and a wonderful God that we, that we serve. So here Mary, or um, Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit just at the presence of Christ being there in utero. Wonderful. And when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you tend to speak things that are of God's heart and, heart and that are loaded with truth. So let's see what, what she says here. She says in a loud voice, Elizabeth does, you are the most blessed of all women. And blessed is the child you will, you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me that my Lord's mother comes to visit me? Uh, for as soon as I heard your greeting, the baby within me jumped with gladness. How happy you are to believe that the Lord's message to you will come true. What an affirmation. I mean, after all, you got a teenage girl, she sees a, you know, an, an angel some pretty heavy stuff. She goes to visit possibly her favorite cousin, and she, she in tune is filled with the Holy Spirit. When, when the Holy Spirit is reigning and dwelling in a people, there's agreement, folks. There is agreement. We were talking about that in Sunday school a couple weeks ago. Paul talks about that. You know, when these things are present, when there's an obedience and a serving and a filling of the Holy Spirit, there is a union with the people of God. And they were, they were in union. Elizabeth was able to say, to affirm with Ma what Mary probably needed to hear again through the Holy Spirit speaking to her. The Lord is setting this whole thing up. Now, we're going to go down here to, to verse... Uh, oh, here we go. We'll pick up in verse 46. Now, Mary responds. Mary said, My heart praises the Lord... My soul is glad because of God, my Savior. And even though if you're not carrying the little Savior around, folks, that is a prayer that we should all have. He is good. We praise Him. Our souls are glad because the stock market is out. Our souls rejoice because Fauci says that the vaccine is ready. Hallelujah! You are filled with praise and adoration because finally, I could go to Cheddar's restaurant. No, it's because of our Savior. Folks, I know there are nice things that happen in life and we ought to thank God for those. And those are fine. But ultimately, that real joy comes from Him. Why should you be happy? Because Christ, your Savior, He has come into this wretched world for us. It's, it's amazing. It is a wonderful, wonderful truth. Verse 48, For He has remembered me, His lowly servant. Folks, that is the... If Mary was filled with pride and arrogance, the Lord, she would not have been the lady for the job. It is that humility of heart that the Lord desires within us. That, that, that lowliness. And he sees that and that is someone that He could work with. And that is, that is how we need to be. That's our attitude. From now on, all people will call me happy. Because of the great things the mighty God, uh, the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy. From one generation to another, He shows mercy those who honor him. Generation after generation. You see it in the Zacones, you see it in the Burks, 
And many of you have families where you see generation after generation serving God faithfully and God serving them and loving them faithfully. We get some knuckleheads in the family. I'm one of them. God's faithfulness is there generation to generation. What a heritage we have. You see on, on Facebook, you see all the piles piled in together. And I was looking the other day, I'm like, hey, there's Brian Edder, what he's doing there. I'm like, oh, that's right, he's married to her daughter. Like, you put it all together, but you see these, these families together, all knowing God, what a wonderful thing. Verse 41, uh, he has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. Amen. Uh, again, that pride, that arrogance. Uh, you know, I don't care who they are. I don't care if it's Napoleon Bonaparte. I don't care if it's Adolf Hitler. Whoever these great and mighty men are, um, their kingdoms will fall. They fall. They all have fallen and they will fall. But the Lord's is a kingdom everlasting. It will never end. His reign will never end. He has filled the hungry with good things. Again, this is Mary. This is the teenage girl that saw the angel that goes to visit Elizabeth. This is what the Lord, through the Spirit of God, is, is bringing into her to, to, uh, to speak of. He's filled the hungry with good things. He sent the rich away with empty hands. Um, you know, the, there's nothing wrong with being rich, folks. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But when you start to love and cherish... Uh, that money or those things. That's where the problem is. And, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll work and work and work to acquire, to build up, and then ent and ultimately the Lord just, or just through the, the process of, of, of nature or what happens in the world, it's, it's just gone. It's gone. Empty-handed. And those folks, those arrogant, the things they have it all, they end up empty-handed, but it's, but yet, the hungry are fed, and it's the lowly that are brought up. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to the help of his servant Israel. He's remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. You, you know, you think you're going back a few thousand years now to Abraham and God's call and his promise to him. Abraham leaves his hometown. The nation of Israel is born through Jacob into slavery, into Egypt, and then into the wilderness. And then uh, as the nation of Israel is formed and all the, all the disobedience, all the enemies, he kept his promise. She's at 2,000 years now. And what's wild is you, you know, when you read Jeremiah or Micah um, or Isaiah, and you read the prophet is declaring the importance of the people of God of serving Him, of being faithful, and they're not. And he, they speak of the judgment that's to come and how horrible it is. But yet here and there, He points out, but there will be a Savior that will come. The Messiah will come. They've been talking about Christ for generations. The Lord just didn't decide at this time. Well, I think I'll send my son. He knew. It was part of the plan. And I can imagine the Israelites are like, you know, like, Where'd that come from? Okay, so we're going to be judged. Yeah, I get it. That's not good. And I wish you'd spare us from that. But then they speak of the Son of God coming. So Mary is aware of that. And she says that God has been uh, faithful forever to His servants. Now I want to go down and I want to read. <clears throat> so Zechariah, after the Lord gives him his tongue back, he is able to speak. So I want to hear what this brother has to say because he prophesies as well. Let's read that together. Starting in verse 67. <clears throat> John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and he spoke God's message. Again, the filling of the Holy Spirit. That truth, that insight that God has given him to speak not just for himself, but for people around him to hear so that they would be encouraged in the Lord. Because uh, the Lord desires that. He wants, he wants us to know that he is with us, that he is faithful, that he loves us. Verse 68. Let us praise the Lord, the God of Israel. 
the praising thing is pretty common, folks, when the Holy Spirit is within our lives. There is a thankfulness. We enter His gates with thanksgiving. Uh, even during bad times, always being thankful to God. Um, if you're not thankful, I would force it out and thank God anyway. Thank Him out loud. Thank Him in your prayers. Thank Him in the car. Thank Him, thank Him, thank Him. I promise you that I, I, could, I could call you or Irv can call you or Linda could call you at any point in your life and tell you 20 things you could be thankful for. It's easy to look at the bad and get down and dwell on them and get discouraged, but an attitude of thankfulness, of thanksgiving, is so key. Even outside of Christianity, it is just a good way to live, always appreciating what we have and who we have, but especially as Christians, knowing that He has sent the Christ, knowing that our salvation is secure in Him. Uh, let us praise the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to help His people and set them free. He has provided for us a mighty Savior. I mean, a little baby in the manger. Little baby, little cute little Jesus. Oh, way in the manger. Little Jesus. Mighty Savior. Mighty. That little baby is going to grow up and, and teach the, the will and the heart of God to people around him. He's going to show us a real example of what God on earth is. He's going to stand against those religious zealots that kept people down all the time. No, you got to do this. You got to say this prayer. You have to have this cut off. You have to go here on Saturday. Law after law after law as if that was going to save them. And he showed them the true plan in the heart of God. It is this Savior that though they beat the snot out of Him, I don't know how He took it. How He took it. It's one thing to make the... I, I wouldn't do it, of course. It's one thing to make the decision to go to the cross, but then to keep that decision as you're being beaten and spit on and carrying that cross and hanging there, to keep it until the Lord decided, okay, you're, you're, you're coming back now. Mighty Savior. He is mighty, stronger than we could ever, ever imagine. And He is on our side. We are on His side. Amen. Lost my spot. He's provided a mighty Savior, a descendant of His servant David. He promised through His holy prophets long ago that He would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those that hate us. Darn Philistines. You know the Philistines... Um, when the Philistines had discovered iron uh, uh, through ore, they could develop this iron, this, this steel, and they would make swords out of it. Well, they wouldn't allow Israel to have iron because they would make weapons. Yeah. So talk about taking your guns. It's the same kind of thing. If you want to oppress a people, you don't allow them to have weapons to fight back at you. That's what they did way back then. But these oppressors, and boy, we've always had them. Israel has had them. We have them as Americans. Uh, we have them as Christians. Always people that want to put us down, lock us up, take away our freedoms. It, it, it has not ended. Whether it's the Philistines, the Muslims, the liberals, I don't care. There's always someone after what is precious and is of God. And you have it. You have it. You are a target just by virtue of who you hang out with and who you have in your life. The Christ. You're different, folks. Wonderfully different, but you're different. You're special. Verse 72. He said He would show mercy to our ancestors and remember His sacred covenant. The Lord never forgets the promises He's made. Never. With the solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, he promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve him without fear. Without fear. We read in Sunday school uh, in the book of Philippians, <clears throat> Paul points out to the Philippians, he said, because you will serve the Lord and because you are not full of fear, that will be a testimony against your oppressors. They'll, in other words, they'll appreciate the fact that their judgment is at hand 
because you, they're bringing all this stuff down on you and you are not afraid. So it reminds the oppressor that they are not going to win. In fact, their fate is, is sealed and it is damnation. Paul said, you remind them. You're not being afraid reminds them of that. And also, what an encouragement when the people around you, when all of us, everybody's fretful and worrying. What's going to happen? Oh, Biden this, Trump's mad, all this. What's going on in COVID and Fauci and all these things? When there is a peace that you have because of your reliance on that mighty Savior something to see there folks there's something to see and people will 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 see that and it'll be a testimony of the Lord's greatness and a wonderful opportunity to, to share the word of God with them um, <clears throat> and allow us to serve him without fear verse 75 so that we might be holy and righteous before him all the days of our lives I know we got hang-ups other things we fail sin can ensnare us but we need to step away from that. Uh, Zacharias is telling us, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, that we can serve Him, we can be holy and righteous before Him all the days of our lives. Verse 76, he's talking to his son. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High God. You will go ahead of the Lord to prepare His road for Him, to tell His people that they will be saved by having their sins forgiven what a message what a wonderful wonderful message and, and you know sin in america has become pretty commonplace it's become pretty accepted these days but boy even though it may be socially accepted personally it is still very depriving and still very destructive in our lives it doesn't matter what they say on the tv it's something that tears us up it tears up the people around us it just does just by nature, that's what it does. But we can be saved from that, Zacharias, by, uh, by the, the Son of God. <clears throat> Verse 78, our God is merciful and tender. Amen. He will cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us and to shine from heaven on all those who live in the dark shadow of death. Folks, that's where we are addressing. 917 Dark Shadow of Death Lane, Grimsley, Tennessee. That's where we live. That shadow of death is before us, but yet the light of heaven is shining down upon us through our Lord to guide our steps into the path of peace. Verse 80 says, referring to John the Baptist, the child grew and developed in body and in spirit. There's a growth. Uh, CJ may grow another foot tall. Um, I don't know. But also in spirit. Just that growing up. And even his children, uh, Belle and Phoebe, growing in spirit. Not only in height, but in spirit. The, the love of God. And even as adults, that spiritual growth is so essential. Um, he lived in the desert until the day when he appeared publicly to the people of Israel. There was a time just like Christ when it was time for John to come. Um, <clears throat> so hang in there, folks. You may feel like, oh, I'm not really doing much. You know, the Lord's not using me. It may just not be time. Always be faithful. Always be ready. Time. Time. God bless you guys.